with is maybe to uh, uh, introduce my, my uh, small team. I have already introduced myself this morning, so um, why not? Uh, let's, let's get started. So um, thank you. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? So Paul Morgan, um, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I look after our global sales team for manufacturing, automotive, and industrial IoT. And our group looks after the edge computing uh, division. So thank you. Hello, um, I'm Joris Fredrik from uh, Schneider Electric. Uh, I'm based in, in Belgium, quite close to here. I'm uh, leading a European sales organization looking especially into uh, automotive accounts, life science, and, and retail. And my name is A. Tekkers. I work for Scale Computing, I'm responsible for marketing products and channel in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And um, Scale is a company that probably not that many people know, so I explain a, a bit what they do. We build software to build micro and nano data centers for, uh, based on hyperconvergence, virtualization, and specifically for edge computing. Yeah, so, so we, we are pretty uh, ambitious in this panel because we, uh, we want to really look at practical implementation in the industry of, of the concept of the edge, the IT, OT conversion. So um, uh, in, in, um, um, in, in, the, uh, in my introduction this morning, I, I was speaking about how pervasive the notion of the edge is across multiple sectors, that this is not just about IT, it's about the integration of IT with many other different contexts. So we, we are lucky today to have a different perspective to this. So maybe, uh, uh, Paul, we could, we could start with you uh, and, and your experience at uh, HP. So when we look at those uh, hyper-converged uh, hyper architectures um, in, in many different dimensions, in many different sectors. Maybe we could start with some industrial applications and understand your, your perspective and your experience at, uh, at HP with those, uh, those architectures and their practical deployment challenge and opportunities that are, that are associated to them. Of course, and so thanks, uh, Cyril, for the question. So I think, um, first of all, apologies. We can't talk about any customer name specifically. Um, we, uh, the good news is we can talk about some examples and, and different segments and, uh, and what we're doing with those customers. So typically today, when we're talking from HPE or Hewlett Packard Enterprise to our customers around IT and OT convergence, it's typically starting with the, you know, encouraging them to really go directly to the data um, and get as close to the data as possible. Um, so right at the data source, so whether that's the, uh, the production line or the sensor or the robot or the pump. Um, and then really, um, you know, where we're not looking at, I guess, more importantly, is, um, you know, customers that already have a, you know, a lot of PLCs in place, um, you know, lots and lots of machines, you know, software running, and, um, you know, and their OT layer is in relatively good shape. Um, but we're talking with customers and working with customers today that very much have, you know, lots and lots of industrial PCs, um, you know, lots and lots of industrial equipment, and they're finding a real challenge when they combine those and uh, getting a lot of you know, uh, issues and errors. So you know, think about you know, the way I'd best describe it is very much a non-standardized environment. Lots of different platforms, lots of different applications, a real mish mish mishmatch, so to speak, of applications. And working with them to really understand you know, where do they want to go, what do they want to consolidate, and understanding what the business case is. I think this is the most important thing. Is it that the environment's not stood up, or the platform's not stood up? Is it they're not getting the ROI they're looking for? Um, is it, um, uh, you know, it's just simply error prone or, you know, it could, could be simply something like that they're not seeing the quality level of the production or manufacturing that they would expect. And so, you know, based upon that business case, we look to work with them on, on some outcomes and then really build upon it from there. And as I said, um, um, you know, these customers typically that we can't really name, but they're mostly coming from, you know, the manufacturing or discrete manufacturing segments and automotive um, as well. So... Um, yes, I, I think I think um, um, what 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 what, uh, what I hear and, and I, I want to emphasize is very heterogeneous environments that come from a lot of legacy, which is uh, I think a very important dimension of the industrial space. Uh, uh, plants, factories uh, are built uh, to last for a long time, so they embark a lot of legacy. So this heterogeneity is of course an element of complexity for customers. Making multiple domains, multiple technologies uh, uh, together are important. And, and as you, you, you said, focusing on the problems that need to be solved is more important than focusing first on the technology that needs to be used. So uh, I think that's a very important perspective. Yeah, and, and I think just you know, to, to your point, you know, we're typically not working or, or needing to help customers that are, you know, if customers have hundreds and hundreds of yards of racks with thousands and thousands of machines and in a very you know, um, solidly running you know, IT environment, mm -hmm. 
they're not the typical types of customers that, that need our help today. So, as I said, it's very much that non-standardized, um, um, you know, lots of industrial machines, mm. lots of industrial PCs, and looking to consolidate with a significant sort of uh, business case behind it. So. Yeah, and, and I believe the uh, interoperability, the ability of players to work together is, uh, is very important. So, so maybe, Joris, we can, we can look at, at another sector which, are, which has different attributes, uh, retail. So in the retail industry, we have probably less complex applications compared to, uh, to uh, the industrial space, but more distributed in more different locations with an, an even more uh, heterogeneous landscape of uh, people and context and technology. So, so wh what's your take in the retail space? Wh what have you observed and, and wh what do you learn and recommend from that? Absolutely. Uh, I think there are a lot of challenges today in, in the retail environment, and I think you all in your da daily life are, are seeing this. When you read the, the, the news, for example, you see a lot of retail companies are shutting down stores, let people go. So the traditional retail is confronted with uh, new models in online business. You see also the Amazon Go as an example, for example. So a lot of retail is, is pushed in, in, a, in a transformation model. And how to fight against these uh, online business models, this Amazon Go model, mm. is to fight back with technology. Uh, because they need to uh, reinforce the in-store experience. Mm. That's, that's, that's very crucial for, for these, these, guy, these guys. So how to fight back on technology and how to feed this in-store experience, then you have to look to augmented reality, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, look into uh, IoT, yeah, that, that's very crucial. Um, when you see today already applications in the stores, you talk about uh, a magic mirror, when you have to choose your glasses, mm. when you go to a fast food chain, you have your post that you use, you have Amazon Go. But that's only the first step. Uh, we have a lot of things to come in front of us. So, for example, uh, when you go to a stop you, shop, you have the mannequins uh, looking to you. They will recognize you when you are a VIP customer. They will see your expressions on your face, so the sales guy can come to you when it is needed. Um, a lot of things are moving into that direction. You have also personalized store pads, as an example. The screens around you are personalized based on the data you're uh, submitting uh, when you're there. So very interesting thing what's happening, but impacting, of course, IT, uh, impacting the store IT, and then we come back to, to the edge environment. And when we do some reading, uh, we see that today 27% of the IT managers in, in retail uh, say that we are okay to, 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 anticipate on, to anticipate on what's coming next, but also 20% is holding off new in-store applications because the IT infrastructure is not there yet. So a lot of things are happening over there. And I think to, to build a successful IT infrastructure in, in, into the store, I think you have five pillars to look after. That's of course the availability of the network, that's one element. A clear strategy on capturing the data with NFC, Bluetooth, uh, and other beacons, that's, that's very crucial. Uh, we also addressed today that you don't have IT staff everywhere, so a, a very strong centralized model for monitoring what's happening over there is crucial. Converged infrastructure and also the security aspect, because if you listen to all the applications, you talk a lot about personal data also. So security, cyber security and physical uh, security is, is very crucial in this, this area. So I think this, this companies needs from a headquarter level to, to look to standardization processes. To, to make sure they have in store a clear strategy on smaller micro data centers and a clear cloud-based management platform to keep control over what's happening and, and anticipate on, on, on future in-store strategies. That's a bit how I see it. Yeah, and we can, and we, in, based on what you say, we can clearly see the tension because uh, uh, the, the um, uh, opportunity for people in the physical retail space mm -hmm. to counter the trends of everything moving to digital doesn't sound completely obvious. Mm -hmm. I think all of us as individuals have learned to get a better experience online than in the physical mm -hmm. space and feel less and less the need to go to those spaces. So they yeah. will have to do a quantum leap in terms of experience yeah, to I bring guess. back people in the stores and, and create the best blended digital and physical experience. Absolutely. So this consume a lot of IT in a space, uh, mm -hmm. contrary probably to the industrial space, where having very strong, sophisticated IT, mm -hmm. uh, augmented reality, you mentioned uh, magic mirrors yeah. or, or uh, quite magical stuff, mm -hmm. it's certainly not what the typical employee in those facilities can maintain. So you, you highlight uh, perfectly the need of uh, how do we manage this, how do we operate this, uh, how do we create the tools for the team so that or, or the teams here or remotely that they could operate so that's a quite fascinating uh, dynamic 
So, so add if, if we look at even further in the reality, if we look more on the um, equipment uh, part, uh, how does that work in reality? What, what, what's the experience you have gained at, uh, uh, at your company scale? And, and what, what have you learned in that journey? And what do you recommend to all of us? Yeah. So to piggyback on the retail experience, um, one of our biggest customers in, in Belgium and Luxembourg uh, and Netherlands is a, is a big food retailer. And um, they are all very much focused on what you just said. Yeah, the experience, uh, the, the new technologies, the, the, the fact that they want to bring that experience to the store and to the, to the consumer. Uh, but at the same time, they need to be competitive, they need to look at cost, they need to look at uh, how many people can they have to manage that, etc. So remote management is key, simplicity is key, but it needs to be up all the time, it needs to be redundant. So all these kind of factors are important to those companies. And what we've seen uh, in, in the analysis of that specific company is that they looked at cost, as I said. They looked at re it needs to be redundant. It needs to be a cluster. It needs to be simple because there's no certified engineer in the store. There are different stores, big, small, medium. Yeah, th it all depends. So uh, scaling, and it comes back to the name of the company, everyone focuses on scaling up. But in the edge, you need to be able to scale down as well. Yeah, because there are, there are certain parts of the edge that require less in terms of number of virtual machines or number of applications, but still they need to be up. So smaller footprint, same data center type functionality, but in a much smaller package. And the only way to do that is to have smart software uh, that we built to enable that. Um, so, so I, I think uh, uh, clearly the, the ability, uh, so, so we have customers that want to create different experience. We saw the experience in, in retail. The ability for the people that uh, uh, design, uh, install, operate all the equipments for that is extremely important. So it's just not a matter of building stuff. It's really a matter of, of thinking from capex to opex in multiple uh, dimensions. Um, if, if we if we step back, Paul, uh, we, we and we go back to a little bit to the uh, to the uh, fundamental. So I, I was doing a, I, I was having a couple of discussions with journalists uh, be, before before that panel. There is still this recurring questions about. The edge, okay, is it uh, a temporary, necessary uh, evil, or is it something that is there for the long run for some very, go very, very good reasons? I, I was uh, uh, mentioning, and, and my perspective on that is uh, the edge needs the cloud, the cloud needs the edge, and the two, in fact, uh, uh, are amplifying each other. They are very good. Conflict. There is no conflict to me. Uh, there is a complementarity. But fundamentally, wha what do you think in your experience with the exposure you have uh, at HP? Wha what are really the most important trigger points for customers to, to uh, look in details at the edge? What, what are the key elements of the value proposal or what are the key elements of needs that they have that uh, are important for, for them at the edge? You know, it's a, it's a very good question. And, and we get we get asked this question a lot. What's the you know what the, if, if you could almost sum it up in one word, um, you know what's the most important thing when when you think about the edge and you know if I was to choose one word to talk about the edge I would I would probably choose bandwidth. Um, it's going to be the most important and the biggest factor for the edge in the future. So if you look at any of the reports and you've probably heard it many times today, um, you know all the big analysts um, are shooting for anywhere between 50 to 75 percent mm. of all data will be. Will, will need to be will, will be produced at the edge, but also will need to be processed at the edge. And this isn't in five or ten years' time. This is in three years' time. Yeah. Uh, Gartner, the, one of the leading analyst firms, is, is, is predicting 75% of all data will be produced and processed at the edge by 2022. Mm -hmm. That's in three years' time. So bandwidth is going to be absolutely key. Um, some of these solutions, uh, we've got video surveillance solutions that are producing petabytes of data a day. Uh, you don't want to send that anywhere. Um, it needs to be produced and processed right at, well it is produced but it needs to be processed and analyzed at the source and I think it's absolutely key to you know especially considering the the cost um, implement, Im implications of all this data um, it, we really need to have a good understanding about you know what's being produced where does it need to go and that's why edge and edge computing is really going to be absolutely key moving forward just simply because of the huge amount of data that's going to be produced um, and, and, and as I said, it's, it's, it's going to be absolutely massive. And we heard before around a, 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 one of the early presentations around you know, connected car and producing petabytes of data per day is just one example. So uh, yeah, bandwidth would be the, the sort of the number one uh, uh, topic and, and a priority for me around edge in, in the future. 
Yeah, and, and uh, as, as I hear in, in, in what you said, uh, th there are multiple dimensions of the needs. Uh, it could be uh, the uh, economic optimum to where, where do we push a certain amount of data. There could be latency, there could be experience, there could be privacy, there could be many different dimensions that probably amplify each other and then create a good case for the edge. I, I have personally heard a lot of uh, conversation where people are saying, well, this is just a temporary phenomena uh, because anyway, uh, compute storage in the cloud is a race to the bottom, it's going to get cheaper and cheaper, and then we can move petabytes of data to the cloud, it doesn't matter. Well, it's cheap, but it's not free. Uh, and, uh, and there is a big difference between cheap and free altogether. <laughs> uh, and, and I think uh, by the time we find an economical way to process petabytes of data, uh, customers are uh, uh, going to look at better things. Uh, well, uh, by the time we realize that 4K in TV was a reality, uh, then we start to see on the market people speaking about 8K. So there might be certainly a plateau to all that because our eyes cannot see in uh, 16K. Uh, but, but, but there is a tendency that the more the technology absorbs use cases, the more uh, new use cases are emerging that need different things. So my, my, my take is that it's really uh, not cloud versus edge, it's, it's cloud with edge uh, and, and amplifying each other's. And uh, uh, maybe, maybe add or, or uh, 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 Joris, do you, do you have different or complementary perspective on that? Uh, I, I agree with your statement. Uh, I, I want maybe to add to uh, talking about several segments about automotive, retail, life sciences, mm. and so on. I think uh, then we see a, a slight difference. Uh, mm. For example, when I go back to my previous topic like retail, talking about uh, customer experience, then availability is an important one. Mm. When you are entering a store, when everything is dark, when there is, the screens are dark, and, and so on the customer is having a very bad experience mm. and this is impacting what the, the retail company mm. wanted just to achieve, to have a better in-store experience. So I think availability is, is maybe there, something much more important. Mm. Choosing one word is, is very challenging, to mm. be honest. Uh, looking to all the data security is also mm. a topic what I would like to, to uh, address here. Mm. Yeah, I agree on availability. I, th I think the demands from the audience or the consumer or the people that build the infrastructure, uh, uptime and, and, and reliability and redundancy and data protection, that's all going to be very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise we will disappoint a lot of people and we don't want to do that. So, so may maybe uh, moving on to, uh, to another topic, we, uh, we have kind of hinted in previous conversation of, of the telco space. So uh, I, I was hearing some conversations, uh, managing towers, 5G, the IT infrastructure. Uh, and by the way, what I was mentioning in the keynote this morning, uh, the increase of the energy dem demand, uh, the increase of the energy demand on the telecom infrastructure is also extremely important. So uh, 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 maybe uh, Paul or you, Joris, uh, or, or complement if you want. Wh what's your take on the, on the telco space, on, on all that dimension? Risk, opportunity, challenge, winner, losers? Well, I mean, a, a th tough question, so I, I probably want to know who's, who's from a telco in the room so you don't throw tomatoes at me <laughs> uh, with my answer. But I think, um, you know, f obviously it's, it's clear that they've faced some challenges with, these, with the new business models moving forward. I mean, content demand, video um, is, is somewhere that they've, that they've succeeded. I think it's no question that the telcos absolutely have a, a huge um, market presence, um, or what they call point of mm -hmm. presence. Um, you know, they spend billions on infrastructure. They have, you know, computer rooms, data centers, base stations full of compute um, and infrastructure uh, in the geographies they cover. So they're absolutely, for me, from our perspective, uh, poised and, and, and ready to capitalize on these new um, uh, market opportunities and, and, you know, that the edge is bringing. Um, you know, just one example would be connected car. Um, and, you know, with the, with the launch of 5G, um, these cars today already are producing 40 petabytes, um, you know, up to 40 petabytes per day. And then when you look at autonomous driving, mm. you know, all of that's going to need to be offloaded. So the telcos are very squarely positioned mm. for that, um, in, a, in, in, in my view. And um, more importantly, I think, when you think about the skills that they have, especially around carrier grade, NEBS, um, you know, the f five nines. Mm. Um, this is going to be absolutely key when we think about things like connected car, autonomous driving, because people's lives are, in, are, are at mm. risk. And so I think that the telcos very much have an opportunity to, to mm. execute and, and, and really drive this uh, uh, together moving forward. Yes. Yeah, I think for telcos, um, they're all looking for new ways to make money. And uh, services is the way to make money. 
services typically are applications. Applications typically run on virtual machines these days and run on modern architectures that can scale up and scale down. So I, I think that Telco is definitely one of those players in the edge that will offer more and more, um, let's say, opportunities mm. to everyone using it. And, and, and you, you mentioned autonomous car. I think, I think that's an interesting illustration. So we have mobile assets that uh, produce a lot of data or that also need to consume a lot of data. I think uh, we, we can operate a lot of things at the edge and we need to for safety reasons. But at the same time, we are going to get better autonomous vehicles because we will be able to offload those data, move them to the cloud, train, improve the models uh, that then we will need to bring back to the car so that we can improve driving, improve security, improve many different dimensions. So all in so real time. All in, all in, all in real time. Uh, uh, and and this, has a, this, this is a tremendous challenge and opportunity at the same time for the telco. You were mentioning availability. We have work um, with oil and gas companies uh, in, uh, in very interesting application in oil field management uh, using uh, analytics and AI at the edge for uh, uh, pump predictive maintenance. Those are remote places where even if infrastructure improve a lot, uh, there, there is still an issue of not only latency, but availability, reliability of the network. Uh, and uh, we, how and simplicity. We, and simplicity, yeah. and how do you uh, address those different cases? How do you bring value in those specific contexts uh, uh, with, with the right technology? And again, that's another area where, where Telco have an important role to play. Uh, as we are going towards the end of the panel, maybe any, any uh, things that we have not covered on the edge, on the practical side of the edge, any final thinking and recommendation to the audience based on your personal experience? I think in, in sort of in summary, uh, we, you know, we, um, we definitely expect um, the, the, uh, the edge to grow. If you think about the, the amount of data on the edge today, it's 10%. So um, anywhere between 50 and 75 of all data within you know, three to five years' time. So that's... You know, it's definitely coming. Um, we are going to need different ways to compute and process that uh, moving forward. I think, um, you know, our company has had a history of innovation to develop new compute platforms to serve these types of needs. One uh, area, key area of focus of ours is to really help um, manage that from an IT perspective when, you know, when IT and OT converge. Um, and so if you, if you just think about taking the burden off the IT to actually manage that environment, you know, we'll almost think of us as, as a service model, so call it edge as a service. And it's something that we're going to be driving moving forward, and we're really excited about the future and, um, and, and you know, where, where the edge is going to take us. Yeah, if you, if you look into to edge versus, let's call it, traditional data center or the regional uh, edge solution, uh, the journey, um, I see uh, an edge strategy more as a, as a journey together with, with the customer as a, as a supplier like a Schneider Electric. Uh, why? You have the, the local entities from the customer, you have the headquarters, so you build together in getting the organization more visible. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's an important element. And I think on top of the solutions we today deliver, I think uh, what is also even more important is, is the, how you supply the, the agility on that topic. And also looking into the edge, uh, a point I want to highlight is your service model. So service supply chain on top of your solutions you today already deliver. That's something that is important for me. Yeah, I would like to reiterate what I said before. I think everyone needs to understand that scaling up is important, but scaling down is, is equally as important. But in, in, a, in a way that you keep the same functionality, uh, but at a smaller footprint. And that's going to be crucial uh, for everyone playing in this space. So, so maybe to uh, to add my my uh, uh, personal thought on that and, and complement and and to uh, conclude, I think uh, we we have discussed a lot during this panel about the reality of the implementations, uh, the challenge that that we face as as an industry to address them. Um, I think we have uh, characterized the strong need of the market uh, to to have uh, a combination of the right hardware, system, software, services at the edge to. Uh, not only create new experiences for customers, but also to be able to do this in a simple way, efficient way, uh, productized way. I, I, I will add one more step to this. I think the trap could be to think about edge versus cloud, cloud versus edge, but remain in the conversation about how do we do the same use case in a different way with a different infrastructure. I think we should also look at the innovation side of the story. Uh, how do we look at the edge as a new context so that we can create different uses, 
different innovation use cases uh, and take the opportunity of the complementarity of the capabilities that we have between the cloud and the edge so that we can invent new stories, even new cases, and take this as an innovation context, as an industry, and work collaboratively together using those assets so that we can create new value for, for our customers and partners. So thanks for your participation. Uh, I think we should be pretty much on time. And uh, I, I think if you, if you would like to uh, continue the conversation with, with, with the panelists, uh, all of them are uh, in or around the uh, Schneider booth, so uh, they will be able to answer to your questions more in details about their specific companies, their specific experience, uh, and, and give you all the details that you would like to have uh, to continue that conversation.